Hello everyone, my name is Timothy Sarno. I am going to SUNY ESF, majoring in conservation biology in the class of 2023. Today, I will be discussing the life of the molecular biologist, Francis Crick. Francis Crick was born on June 8th in 1916 in Northampton, England, in a middle-class family. When he was young, his aunt taught him to read and his uncle allowed Francis to experiment in his garden shed. When Francis became older, his uncle Arthur paid for his schooling at the University College London after Crick's father's shoe business had gone under. Crick would later receive his bachelor's in physics from the University College London in 1937. Then later, after receiving his bachelor's in physics, Francis Crick went on to study biology at the Cavendish Laboratories under the Medical Research Council in 1949 obtaining his PhD from the MRC in 1954. Crick, the man on the right, during his studies met a fellow scientist named James Watson, seen on the left, in 1951 in the Cavendish Laboratories. They would later go on together to find the twisted ladder structure of DNA in 1953. Crick also became close with Maurice Wilkins, who was attributed to the infamous leak of Photo 51, Taken by an X-ray crystallographer, Raymond Gosling, student of Rosalind Franklin, Photo 51 led to the discovery of DNA's structure. Maurice Wilkins, without the permission of Rosalind Franklin, shared the image shown on the screen with James Watson and then took the credit for the findings. Crick, Wilkins, and Watson went on to receive the Nobel Prize for their work in 1962. Francis Crick conducted many experiments and had many other findings in the field of genetics. Among his most important was the Crick-Brenner et al. experiment in 1961. This experiment suggested that codons are found and read in triplets. With the experimentation conducted in the Cavendish laboratories, Crick and other scientists used acridine yellow to find how the insertion and deletion of nucleotides would affect the reading of triplets during translation in RNA. Acridine yellow was used in the experiment due to its ability to cause frameshift mutations to strands of RNA, or insertions and deletions. Then, the team would analyze the phenotypes of E. coli, resulting from different amounts of genetic tampering. The team of scientists used phenotypes listed as wild type, where plaque grew on E. coli B and K12 strain plates, non-functional, where R plaque grows on each plate, and leaky, where plaque is present but there was not the true wild type shown. These phenotypes would allow for the scientists to determine if the mutations, insertions, and deletions were leaky or non-leaky. To clarify, leaky mutations causes normal function of the gene to leak into the phenotype, while non-leaky mutations cause loss of normal function in the phenotype. To maintain equal treatment to each trial, experimentation was conducted on the B cistron region of the bacteriophage T4, which attacks E. coli. The B-cistron, simply stated, is a section on an RNA molecule of the bacteriophage that codes for specific polypeptides during protein th synthesis. After extensive tests, Crick and his team found that the genetic code was degenerate, where multiple codons can lead to the production of the same amino acid, due to the presence of different phenotypes when adding mutations to the same regions of the B-cistron of the T4 bacteriophage. In addition, their results strongly supported a coding ratio of three, or triplets, within the genetic reading frame. This was supported when it was realized that there had to be three deletions or insertions for the functionality of the RNA to be restored. From this experiment, Crick and his fellow researchers found that polyphenylalanine was, found, was made by adding a triplet of uracil to the RNA of phenylalanine by using the newly found reading frame. The new compound had medical uses for vitiligo, depression, and ADHD. And of course, by introducing the reading frame to the science community, scientists were able to crack the genetic code for the formation of amino acids in 1966. Now, of course, we have all seen this table and have learned how to use it. Francis Crick was a well-renowned figure in the field of science. In 1962, he had won the Nobel Prize and was elected a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Later in 1966, he published Molecules in Men, which discussed some of his findings concerning molecular biology. In 1988, Francis then published What Mad Pursuit, A Personal View of Scientific Discovery, where he describes how he felt throughout his time as a scientist. 
Then in 1991, he would receive the Order of Merit, an award presented to those who are distinguished characters in their field. Then, from 1977 until his death, Crick was a distinguished professor at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in San Diego, California. In 2004, Francis Crick died from a long battle with colon cancer at the age of 88 years old. Thank you so much for tuning in to my presentation. Information was received from the sources shown on the screen now. I really hope that you learned something today, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.